around your town and across the country. This is America Today. Hello, I'm Neil Brown. This time on America Today, reporter Bruce Johnson and photographer Jody Small from station WUSA in Washington, D.C. continue with their series, Why Won't They Come Home? They've gone to Thailand to talk with some Vietnam vets who have stayed behind. Some of them are drinking themselves to death. Others are caught up in illegal drug trafficking. The easy living makes up for some of the undesirable living conditions. Do you miss the States? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Well, you know, all of us miss it. Uh, just sitting around talking, this is one of the reasons that uh, most of us tend to stick together because of the different language barrier uh, with, the, you know, with the ties. Thailand can be friendly to Americans, but it can also be quite uncomfortable. Adjusting to the monsoon season takes more effort than digesting the food and language. Some parts of the country get over a hundred inches of rain each year. Another depressing fact in Bangkok is the poverty, the kind unheard of in the United States. The average Thai worker earns $800. That's per year. The poorest citizens, estimated in the hundreds of thousands, live in makeshift huts that sway in the wind underneath the city skyscrapers. There are no fancy formal names for places like this. The Thai people simply call them for what they are, the slums. In this particular community, there's some 700 families, and many of them include lots of children. A Vietnam veteran's pension could lead to a ticket out of these parts. So young Thai women, still in their teens, often find American vets as liberators from a life of certain destitution. The two are most certain to meet in one of the bars along Bangkok's Pat Pong Strip. In the States, we might call it prostitution. In Bangkok, it's called something else. It's a way of life that is a method of existing and, and sometimes a really good way of existing because they meet really good people that take care of them in their life, you know, I mean. That's Big Bill, Vietnam veteran and assistant manager of the Grand Prix Bar, where the young Thai women are ordered by the numbers on their skimpy outfits. When you give girls money here, you're just helping them live. I mean, help buy their clothes, this and that. It's not like they're making a fortune, you know. I mean, it's a way of life. It's not prostitution. Totally different thing. Okay. It's hard to explain unless you've been here a few times and seen it. Whatever the reason the Vietnam vets gave us for staying in Bangkok, the young women appeared to be part of it. This is the new cowboy bar. The stories of Vietnam and the reasons for enlisting in that war flow freely here every night of the year. I had a duty to fulfill and then I wanted to fulfill my duty. So I enlisted in the military and went in the army and that was... My father did it, his father did it. They fought in clearly defined wars though, right? Correct. Well, I, we had a clearly defined objective in, in Vietnam also. It's just a matter of there was, there was no will to carry out that objective. Fred Reeve of Rockville, Maryland came back to Southeast Asia nine years ago. He's divorced from one Thai woman, but knows there will be others. Fred says he's in between jobs, like a lot of the American men here. He misses his family back home. He doesn't miss the treatment he got as a Vietnam vet. Why are you here? So far away from home. Well, I like Thailand. I like the lifestyle. Um, I, it's, it's Southeast Asia. It's, I, I guess, I guess I, I became a man here, and as a result, uh, uh, I, I still, I'm still a man here. And in the states, there's, there's some doubt about. It that manhood, I, I think, basically. But uh, let's face it, Fred, uh, we're no longer teenagers. We're getting up in age. Sure. Are you still looking for something that you might have been looking for way back then? I don't think so. I, I, may, be, I may be searching for a, uh, an identity I'll never find. Who knows? But, but I... 
I do know that at least at least here among among my 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 fellow expats, and there are a lot of us here. I I feel much more camaraderie and 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 friendship than I than I felt at home. The new cowboy bar is located in the middle of Bangkok, but no Thai is spoken here, and no one is allowed to criticize the United States. The music is from another time. The news and sports videos are also outdated, but it's all American, except for the Thai women. Grant Francisco is operator of the new cowboy bar. What is it about Bangkok? Well, if I told you, you'd cut it out of the tape, probably, you know? <laughs> but, uh, Try me. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, it's an easy way of life. The Thai people are wonderful in the first place. But uh, not cop out on you. It's uh, easy girls and uh, easy way of living and uh, easy life, right? Yeah, try this now. I mean, most of the men in here are with women, what, half their age. You know, the ages of the girlfriends they left behind in the States. Should we read something into that? Are you going through your, your second... Uh... <laughs> second childhood? Uh, well, it might be. Uh, I, I know a lot of the guys, and myself included, think uh, we're still in another era, perhaps, you know. Uh, we're having a good time. It's as if the expatriates and the cowboy bar are frozen in time, far away from their families, but not their friends. Rather than running, I'm searching. And I'm searching for an alternative from the, the hustle and bustle and the pressure, pressure, pressure environment of, of, of D.C. Perhaps at this late date, we can all agree that we've learned one lesson. That young Americans must never again be sent to fight and die unless we are prepared to let them win. When they finally recognized the Vietnam vet, I think it was a large step in the right direction. Have you been to the wall? Uh, not yet, no. Do you want to see it? Uh, yeah, yes, I do. Look forward to it. Yes, I do. We found two types of Vietnam veterans in Bangkok. Those who say they'll come home one day, and those who know they can never return home. These are men now approaching middle age who volunteered or were drafted to fight for their country in a far-off war. They were somehow transformed into people we no longer knew or understood. Uh, everybody was young. Everybody was impressionable at the time. Um, it was such a traumatic event. You had witnessed... Uh, uh, I think some of the, mo uh, the most atrocities, the biggest atrocities you would see in, in a lifetime. Bill Wager grew to dislike the war, but after trying to fit in with his peers back in Washington State, the marketing executive found his real niche in Bangkok's hotel industry. Growing up in a Western world, one is already incensed whether he realizes it or not, or he's, he's uh, given a certain ability to market. And uh, you see so many more things. You're exposed to more situations in the world that when you come to Thailand you do have a, a certain degree of expertise you can see areas of opportunity Thailand's stability natural resources and cheap labor have made it an economic beacon in Southeast Asia tourists are flowing into Bangkok for first-rate goods and services at third world prices refugees from neighboring Laos Cambodia and Vietnam are also flooding into Thailand for both economic and political reasons they're being held in the same barbed wire camps that existed over a decade ago when the U.S. was fighting in Southeast Asia. The Thais say they're a strain on limited resources, so the men, women, and children refugees stay fenced in, waiting for other countries to take them in. You know a lot of people in the States have forgotten places like this that still exist. The people who work here call it compassion fatigue. You get tired of feeling sorry for people, and uh, I think... Uh, a lot of people don't feel sorry for these refugees anymore. Al Dawson is one of 50,000 Canadians who fought for the U.S. in Vietnam, while 30,000 Americans were escaping the draft by fleeing to Canada. Dawson stayed on in Vietnam and later Bangkok to cover the war stories as a freelance journalist. In, in here, it isn't over, period. I mean, there, there, there is still a conflict. There is still shooting uh, right at the border of Thailand and certainly a lot of it inside Cambodia. 
uh, a lesser amount of shooting from resistance forces in Laos and Vietnam, and uh, the war is very definitely not over. One of the stories in Bangkok has veterans getting caught and jailed in the lucrative drug trafficking that dominates the underworld here. Thailand is part of the Golden Triangle, and two former Green Berets were recently arrested when they tried to smuggle $65 million worth of marijuana into the states from Southeast Asia. Robert and Samuel Coldflesh used the Superstar Bar in Bangkok as a front for their drug dealings. When somebody that young comes up with as much money as they had, it uh, makes one uh, kind of wonder. Fancy know, cars, expensive villas. That... Uh, sitting and passing out hundred baht, hundred dollar bills, you know, and a few things like that. It, it, to me, it made me wonder, but uh, uh, their, their story was that uh, they had made a lot of money, and uh, the superstar there, that, uh, they were, you know, something like five or six thousand dollars a night they were making there a night. Is that possible? Uh, it's possible, but not probable. We're told that 30 to 40 Vietnam veterans are in Thai prisons for drug trafficking. An even larger part of the expatriate community is on the outside, but strung out on drugs and alcohol. They're existing on military pensions, small odd jobs, and old war stories. But I will say that there are a lot of uh, dead soldiers who didn't die. Guys who, who aren't doing anything, uh, who sort of exist on their pensions, and, and they go to the VFW at 8.30 in the morning and start drinking. Mm. There are a lot of us. From what we've been able to piece together, Captain Melvin Beale was one of those old soldiers who never recovered from Vietnam, who never came home. It makes us realize all of us are just on, this, you know, on the earth for you know, a limited amount of time. And uh, it does make you think about uh, oh, your home or your loved ones back, you know. Captain Beal died while we were in Bangkok. His Thai wife told me he was from Washington, D.C. Had your husband been sick? Yeah. yeah. Um, could you tell us what was wrong? Yeah, drink too much. He, he drank? Yeah. He drank too much? Yeah. Yeah. He called doctor. To this day, we haven't been able to figure out why Melvin Beale didn't come home after his retirement. We don't even know if his family back home was notified of his death. Perhaps his reasons were the same as Rick Fredrickson. You know, a lot of people are going to look at you, Rick, and say, huh, he couldn't cut it in the States. The competition. I, don't, I couldn't. No, I, I, I couldn't. I, I don't, I don't want to live that, that lifestyle. Not right now. Like Charlie Washington, maybe Captain Bill felt racism in the military and found acceptance in Southeast Asia. Do you feel more comfortable here I feel being a lot black? More comfortable. I feel a lot more comfortable here than I do in my own country, yeah. Like Mark Smith, maybe Captain Bill was angry over the image Vietnam vets got back in the States after the war. Camouflage fatigues get bullet holes in them, right? Over here. Back there, uh, it's the image thing that I, it's the only thing I have a problem with. And that is of this whining Vietnam veteran. We were the only Americans at Captain Melvin Beale's funeral. I could not help but wonder if the serviceman died halfway around the world, not knowing that his country is trying to heal from its Vietnam wounds that his country, after 13 years, is trying to make things right with the Vietnam vet. If Captain Bill did know, did he think it was all too little, too late? There is no accurate count of just how many Vietnam vets have stayed in Thailand, or how many have died while living there. For many of us, Vietnam is, and will always be, a very sad chapter in American history. I'm Neil Brown. This has been a presentation of the Gannett Broadcasting Group in association with the Gannett Company Incorporated.